Hey, what's up everybody? We are back today with a full walkthrough of the Tyrant Mine Stronghold mission. So I'm putting the video together because after playing the VIP demo and now the demo weekend, I'm realizing that most people have no idea how to get through this mission, what the objectives truly are, and wind up wasting a bunch of time in here when you could be uh, farming for loot and uh, getting the blues out of here that you do get through this mission and not uh, kind of screwing around doing stuff that just doesn't need to be done. So uh, it's going to be double post Saturday, which means as soon as I put this up, I'm going to lose 300 subscribers. But anyways, let's get into this. Once you get to this first area, your first objective is to take out this tower. There are two towers on this lower level that need to be taken out immediately. By this point, I'm kind of expecting that my team will be here backing me up, and I, for whatever reason, have my sniper rifle equipped, but pay no attention to the sniper rifle behind the curtain. Effectively, that tower's got to go down before anything else happens because it just puts too much pressure on your team at this point. So now that the team has shown up and I'm about to shoot the rock with the sniper rifle, that's pro moves, that's why I'm showing that to you, um, just trying to take this thing down, get it out of the way. Now that the team's here, there is another tower up here to the right, which someone is actually going to take out before I get to it. I'm going to mess around with these guys and clean this area up just a little bit. There's some melee fail in here. So right up by that shiny thing, kind of in the middle of the screen there a second ago, that's where the other tower was. And I didn't realize it was gone, so I'm kind of making my way to this position to check on it, and it's gone. So, uh, a little surprised at this point, but we'll start clearing some of these guys up. Your first objective here, once you've cleaned up the tower, is to collect eight of these glowing orbs. Once you do, and you turn them all in, all of the enemies will go away. There is no reason to clear out every enemy once you get to the second um, kind of tier in this area. It just makes no sense. Once you turn in all eight orbs, all the enemies are gone. So keep that in mind. Once you have one, you're looking for this area down here with these um, stalagmite looking things poking out of it. That's where you go to turn in your orbs. So once you pick them up, I think you can carry three at a time. I might be wrong about that. But once you have a few of them, pop down, drop them off. On the lower level, there are three to collect. On the upper level, there are five to collect. And here is just a whole bunch of fun with melee fail. So I'll freeze him again and then try to melee him and he takes no damage. So still bugs, still bugs. Hopefully they'll get that worked out. Let's try to clean up some more guys down here so there's not so much pressure on the team. Since this is kind of the area you come to to do the turn in, clearing guys out down here isn't a bad idea. Clearing guys out up top is kind of a waste of time. Um, there is one turret up top as well that you'll need to deal with when you get up there. It's already going to be gone by the time I get up there, so I won't be able to show that to you. But uh, when we get close to where it's at, I'll try to point it out. So if you head up the hill here, keep an eye out. There are mines. You see this guy blowing up those mines. If you walk up there, those mines will try to uh, catch you. But what I like to do is kind of start from the right-hand side of the map and pick up the glowing orbs that are on this side first and then more work my way around to the center and then uh, back down. Right here, up on that little platform just ahead of me on the left, that's where the uh, turret usually is. The guy who came up here first took it out, rightfully so. That should be your very first objective once you get up top, is taking out that turret. Once the turrets are done, you can set yourself to the task of collecting orbs. We've got three more to go. The worst thing on missions like this, outside of um, doors not opening because people aren't close by, is the fact that you'll wind up getting a number of orbs turned in. There's no more to collect yet there's one random person that has set themselves to the task of killing every enemy on the map instead of just turning in the orbs and making uh, all of the enemies go away. The likelihood that you get drops from enemies is pretty low. You get a much better chance, obviously, just opening, getting to chests, opening those up. 
um, at least on normal and hard through these missions. I just haven't seen a significant number of drops coming from enemies. So being around and making sure you kill every single enemy to you maximize your loot uh, from a timing perspective just doesn't seem to make sense. So I'm going to head up here, try to track down this last orb after I deal with this guy. Get our fallen teammate up. Someone beat me to and try to track this thing down. Should be... Here we go. Alright, now someone is holding the last one. Someone up here has the last one and has just not turned it in. So I'll go turn this one in and then it's kind of a... Uh, the, the effective... Uh, waiting dance in this game is waiting for people to turn these in and complete this stage so once that last one gets turned in I'm not sure who has it at this point all of the enemies will go away and you can move on I wanted to kind of show you guys through here that if you run into a spider web it will overheat you but it didn't quite work out that way that's why I was flying near the spider webs as you're flying through the next couple areas, watch out for those because I have had those overheat me as soon as I touch one of them. So just keep that in mind. Everybody's still up here dying, screwing around with stuff for reasons passing understanding. And I'm just getting lit up. See, there's just no, there's no reason for this to be happening because if someone, whoever is holding that last orb would just go turn it in we'd be fine and there's the person doing it right now so go 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 turn that in for the love of god and there's the turn in and all the enemies go bye bye so that is the only thing that you need to be focused on in the first stage quote unquote of this mission is taking out the turrets Two on the bottom, one on the top, and then collect the orbs, do the turn-ins, and you're done. There's three orbs on the bottom, there's five orbs up top. Once that's done, all the enemies go away, the rift closes, and you can move on to the next stage. Now in this next stage, there are going to be 12 orbs to pick up. The way it works is, you pick up eight orbs to begin with, they're out and about, uh, scattered throughout the map, and then once they've been picked up, there are four more orbs you need to get, but they're locked in cages. And it's not until you've turned in that first set of eight orbs that the enemy spawns called the Gatekeeper, who has the key to unlock those cages. So when you get to this area, first objective, as always, take out the turrets. However you want to do that, there are four turrets. There's two on the side of the map that I'm on right now, and there's two on the other side of the map. So. Hopefully your teammates are helping you take out turrets and they've realized that that's the objective before they go play with any enemies. Now, there is another turret that is right around this rock, but someone did go ahead and take that one out while I was working on this one. So it hangs out right about in here. Alright, we'll go check out the next couple turrets that are on the other side of the map. Just pop down here, get blown up by a mine like a noob and then go play with the rocket turret. So this one back here is a rocket turret. You have to watch out, that gunfire that's coming at me is from another turret. So if you're playing as a storm, you can pretty much perpetually keep this thing frozen as you wait for your um, combo cooldown to hit. And then you can just pop it down with uh, a little regular ammo. When you do get the pop-up on the screen that you're being tracked and targeted, if you just evade, use your dodge button, that will help you evade getting hit by one of the rockets. So if you ever get the purple notification in the middle of your screen and it says evade, you need to dodge, and that's going to keep you from getting hit by the rocket. So just work on getting these turrets down in the back, however you have to do it. Getting at them from the right side where you see my team at now is kind of difficult. That's why I like to use this vantage point because you're kind of protected by a rock and it keeps you from having to uh, go through just swaths of enemies that are uh, trying to take you out. 
There is a sniper that hangs out up here as I face plant into the rock that it helps to take this guy out. I don't know if he, he's still up here. Just getting him out of the way so he's not const constantly sniping your uh, team from this position because he has a great overwatch position on the entirety of the map from here. And it just makes good sense to take him out. So he's out of the way. We'll grab the last orb, go turn that in because everybody has turned in the rest of the orbs by this point. And this will transition us into the next stage. Now for this next stage, I like to hang out over here because the gatekeeper will spawn in one of two positions. He either comes out of this rift for me or he comes out of the one in the center. So, and as you see him, he's running right there. He's the big guy with the shield. So once he pops out, just find him, pop an ultimate and just merc him. Just drop him and kill him. Now you may not always be able to do this solo, but he's your objective. Now once he goes down, he will drop a white flashing item that can sometimes be obscured by the water, which is what I think has happened here. And I'm gonna spend a little bit of time trying to find out where in God's name the key went to. I can't quite find it. it turns out it exploded and it's over here, kind of in front of us to the left. But uh, with all the nonsense going on, I didn't quite see it while we were here. I'll spot it here in just a bit and go pick it up because even though everyone else is fighting over there, no one's actually picking it up. You can kind of see it glowing on the ground. Here it is. And once you pick it up, four little castle icons pop up on your map. And this tells you that the cages have been unlocked and you can come over here, crack them open, and pick up the orbs. So I'll grab two from over here. And we're going to go turn these in. And by the time I do that... My teammates will realize that there are some objectives on the map that need to be taken care of, and they're going to head over there and pick up the final two. Actually, what happens is one person picks up one and one person picks up another, and yep, you guessed it. One person brings it over here and turns it in, and the other two, the other one just decides to hold on to it and dance about killing enemies. So I think Malcolm was the one that came over and turned it in, and then whoever has the other one is just going to randomly fly around the map, attacking enemies. If you get the uh, red beam at you, dodging also is pretty effective to keep from getting sniped. Our other Storm player realizes that someone needs to come over and turn it in, but uh, whoever has it, which you can't tell, I would really like to have text chat in the game and a team window that says who's holding what. So you can like text, so you can just chat to somebody like, hey, you've got the orb, come bring it over, come over here, drop it off, please, stop killing enemies, just get over here. Actually, I don't think Malcolm was the one who turned it in. He's the one holding on to it. So once he gets done playing with the enemies over there and getting himself almost killed, he'll eventually realize that he's got the orb and bring it over here and turn it in, I think. Maybe it's not Malcolm. Yep, it was. So, and once that happens, you will get this handy dandy chest and inside there will be all sorts of goodies. Not as many blues as I would like, but eh, take what you can get. Once it's out of the way, Head back through here, watch out for the mines on the ground, especially if there are people behind you. Don't fly directly over top of the mines. Just because they don't get you doesn't mean they're not going to get your teammates who are close on your heels, hopefully. We're going to head up through here and get to a door. This door that you're going to see will not open until your teammates get close by. Unfortunately, there's not enough distance between the door and your teammates for them to get the... Um, notification that they're outside the mission area so it won't spawn them to you. you just kind of have to come over here hang out by the door and find ways to amuse yourself like throwing your glow sticks at the door and we'll just hang out over here Gogo -Go knows what's going on and generally throughout this entire mission Gogo -Go knows what's going on and tends to uh, be waiting on the rest of the team with me but the rest of the team is just doing, I have no idea what at this point. This is one of those things where I don't think you should have to wait on your teammates to open these doors. Um, 
once the chest has been opened and everybody's alive, it gives you like a 20 second countdown before it teleports you if you're outside the mission area. So it should really just open the door when the first person gets here. And as long as everybody's up, it should really allow them to open the door. But as I jump up and down trying to communicate to my teammates, hey, get over here. You're going to open the door, head inside, and you're going to run into a bunch of enemies. You don't have to kill them. You can just skip them, fly over top of them. This is where I've gotten webbed in the past by flying too close to spider webs and gotten uh, overheated. Drop down in here, point your camera to the south, and then to the east. And this is the direction you need to go so you don't get lost underwater. Navigating underwater is not the easiest thing in this game. So for this mission, you're first underwater, drop down, point your camera south, and then move forward and angle it southeast to east, and that's where you're gonna fly. And once again, we're gonna get to this door and just kind of stand around here and wait a bit. Uh, for all the other mishaps in this, strangely enough, once these guys do get in the water, which is going to be a second, they uh, do find their way up here, which a lot of people get lost underwater. There's another long path underneath the water that leads you to kind of a dead end, which is unfortunate that a lot of people get caught in. So that's why, as I said, when you get in here, you get into the water, set your... Uh, directional uh, marker to the south and then make your way to the southeast and then sa or east and it'll lead you up into this area just a quick tip for uh, navigating underwater there so these guys will eventually pop out of the water and I think as soon as a third person gets here maybe the door should open but they're both going to show up at the same time so door cracks open now in this area, the collection is a little bit different. You're going to need to head into these tunnels and pick up a number of canisters. When you pick up these canisters, you cannot fly. So you need to use your dash, you need to run, whatever you can do to move yourself through here. But that's how you're going to get out of here and avoid enemies. Down in these tunnels, you are going to get met by a few bugs. So I think there's like four or five in each one. You just kind of have to watch out for them and it does take a second for the um, canisters to spawn once the enemies show up the canisters should be around i like to collect the canister in the far back first so that the next trip in here for whoever follows behind me is a little bit easier um, killing off the enemies before you leave isn't a bad idea either just to help out whoever may be coming in here after you in order to pick up the next canister. So for each tunnel, there are two canisters in each tunnel, which means you have to pick up six of them. And there's the melee fail again. I can shoot him, I just can't smash him. And that guy was taking no frost damage. So these things with the uh, big plume on their back, the big sacks on their back, you can generally just avoid them, and they will, if they get close enough to you, they will set themselves to auto-destruct and explode on their own. So it's generally a good idea just to avoid them entirely, because if even if you do kill them and they're right up next to you, they wind up exploding and doing damage to you. Once you do pick up the canister, though, you want to head back out into the main room and make your way up this ramp. When you get up to the top of the ramp, you just want to interact with one of these pylons, and you're going to turn in the canister. Look for the uh, downward facing triangles on the map. That's going to indicate to you where there are still canisters remaining in these caves. And just head back in and we're going to collect another canister. Pick up the one I left in this cave and head back out. Now at a certain point, once a number of canisters have been turned in, I think it's three or four, Scar, it's three, Scar starts showing up. So as you exit the cave the next time, it's entirely possible that uh, you're going to wind up running into a bunch of enemies, including a couple heavies, those big guys with the shields and the flamethrowers. They never quite, at least in any stronghold that I've been in, uh, or at least this stronghold that I've been in. They never seem to be able to make their way all the way to the uh, circular platform up here. They seem to get to like midway, three quarters of the way up the ramp and then stop. I don't know why that is. It might be a bug. They may wind up fixing that, but um, they can get kind of clogged up on the ramp. 
So it can be kind of a pain to get around them if people are fighting them on the ramp for reasons passing understanding. It's generally good to fight them off the ramp if you're trying to distract them for whoever it is that's gathering and trying to help them out. Oh, that's a lot of bad guys. So use your dash to avoid getting hit. There's just no point in, once again, fighting too many of these guys down here because at a certain point, once you turn in six... You guessed it, all of the enemies are going to go away, so killing them off is just not a priority. Picking up the canister is, and I wish you could dash through enemies. You saw me try that there, and that really didn't work out that well. So since I'm the only one that's actually picking up canisters, and as I've now turned in three of the six, well, I'm going to go get the final one and put an end to all of the waves of scars that are spawning endlessly. If you do want to help clean up the waves for whatever reason, there are these large, like, box-shaped things, like right here, that I'm just passing. Blowing those up helps to stem the tide of the scar that are coming into the area. So if you're not on canister collection duty for whatever reason and you're really hard-pressed to uh, kill things, that's what you want to focus on. Alright, so if we look over here, you can see all the enemies are kind of grouped up and they are going away. But what does show up after them is just a bunch of bugs. And in this next stage of this part of the mission, your objective is to simply hang out in the green area on the platform, which this group actually doesn't do a bad job of. And keep the bugs from killing you, but effectively just get the signal strength, keep it high, and it'll eventually fill up that white bar that you see in the top right hand corner, and when it does, it blows away and takes out all of the other enemies. So you don't have to worry about killing off too many bugs. Now, this is a mistake, what I'm about to do is going down to try to save this person because there are just a billion bugs down here. This guy's actually going to die for his efforts because I'm giving up. Stay on the platform, and you don't have to worry about that nonsense. Just fight on the fight at the top of the ramp. Keep the bugs from coming up, and you don't have to worry about all kinds of other crap getting in there and trying to kill you. I'm gonna try. I don't remember if I was successful in uh, saving one of these guys. But I'm going to give it a shot because the more people that are on the platform standing in the green area, the quicker that meter fills up. Alright, I'm just going to hold repair and see if I can get one of these guys I did. I almost died for it because there were so many bugs down there, but it just... You don't have to go through that nonsense with your team. All you have to do is wait on the platform at the ramp, kill bugs, and you're good. Now, while you're on the platform, you probably saw me attack something as I came back up here. There are these little lightning storm things that appear in the air like this. That shooting them is good because they do electrical damage to you. Kind of, You saw one hit that guy. Um, that It decreases your shields. So as soon as they pop up, if you can take them out, it helps. I'm going to assume that as the difficulty goes up on some of these, like if you were on like a Grandmaster Legendary difficulty or whatever it's called, that they'll probably do a lot more damage to your shields and having someone assigned to stay on the platform and your job while we're, you know, trying to stem the tide of bugs from coming up here is to simply look for the orbs and kill them so that they don't just wreck everybody's shields. So that's what I'm setting myself to the task of doing. I'm not really screwing with bugs too much. Once the meter fills back up, as weird as this group, the uh, all the bugs will be taken out, as I said, but as weird as this group wa was, like for this stage of the mission, everybody was doing a really good job after they came back to life of just hanging out on the platform 
much better than any other group I've been with since I've been playing the VIP demo or the uh, actual demo here. As you can see, frost shards do not work well on those things. Bullets are really the key. So the meter's getting close here. And I'm just gonna take that to the face, because why not? Those shields are for, damn it. Alright, once that explosion happens, that means that it's time to move on, collect your loot for a job well done, and we're going to head into the next section. Just like the previous section, there is just no reason to fight the enemies in here, unless you're trying to build up your ultimate for the boss. Now, if you don't have your ultimate stored up by this point, it's probably not a bad idea to try to get it by killing off some of these guys, but... Um, I usually have my ultimate already because there are so many ads to kill on that ramp that if you don't have it by the time you get to this point, I don't know what you've been doing, but obviously you should have been doing it differently. I'm going to fly up, up, up through that area. So if you run into a dead end, you go up and then out through here. Hopefully my teammates will catch up to me at this point. That's why I'm flying around aimlessly thinking maybe... Just maybe if I hang out here, they'll get a little bit closer. But that, alas, doesn't really happen. So you're just looking for this giant hole you want to drop down into, and it's going to drop you into some water. Once again, when you get in this water, set your camera to the south. Back into the deep. And then fly to the south. And it's just a short little stint underwater this time. And it's going to lead you up and out. Once you get out of here, you're going to come into a really big cavern that has a giant dead spider in it. The spider's not going to come alive and kill you or anything like that. But the nice thing is, if your teammates are far enough behind you, as you get up into this cavern, it is going to start porting them in. So that's what's happening in the middle now, so you don't have to wait on them. Wish it worked that way all the time. And you can head through this door. As soon as you go through the door, next stop is the boss. So this is the final boss. And for this boss, I would highly suggest you do not stand on any of the circular platforms. Stand in the middle here, float in the air, away from them, but just don't stand on them. And don't bother attacking her as she comes down, because until she has her health bar, as far as I know, you just can't put uh, any discernible damage on her that registers. When she does get down, though, the objective with her is to attack the four... Um sacks that you see on the side of her those are her weak points so if you can attack them when one of them blows up they will wind up uh dropping her on the ground and she becomes even more vulnerable you have to watch out for her spit attack and as you can see those two people who are dead now were literally standing on that circle that i said don't stand on and when she jumped down off the pillar she wound up landing on them and killing them once she does go down in this first stage, if you can take out one of these uh, sacks on the side of her face, that's the best time to use your ultimate because she's just kind of standing in one place at that point. So I'll drop my ultimate here on her. Sometimes if you're putting enough damage on her in between uh, phases, you don't get an option to use your ultimate because she just goes back up in the ceiling too quickly. Meleeing her like that. I mean, she's just she can just one shot you. She could one shot me if she wanted to. I mean, it just use your dodge when she's shooting stuff at you to try to get out of the way. Keep focusing on the sacks. Keep focusing on her tail. Try to repair this guy without getting killed in the process. Just don't stand in front of her. That if, if you're trying to do melee with her, don't stand in front of her. At some point, she transitions and she starts hanging up this wall. If you come up to the wall and hover, you can put damage on her tail as she goes up. So you can get extra damage on her in between rounds. As she goes up, the side she goes up is the side that ads are going to spawn from. When they start spawning, this is the time to start dropping AoEs on these guys. If you have an area of effect ability other than your ultimate, 
use it on these guys that are spawning. Using your ultimate here is a giant waste, but someone kicked off their ultimate probably accidentally. God knows we've all done that. And then for the way this works right now, hanging out inside this area is safe, so when the boss comes out, she doesn't come out and immediately run over top of you and kill you. You can also stand far to the right, far to the left, either one of those works. But being inside also gives you the ability to pick up any ammo that's dropped from killing off those ads if you've been lucky enough to have your team with you and um, have the ads kind of all fall and die in the same area. So once again, he tried to face tank her and that didn't work out so well. But focus on her tail if you can get shots on her. Otherwise, focus on taking more damage and putting it on her as she gets up here. Just to get more damage for the next transition. And as I said, the side she goes up is the side the adds are come from. So drop your AoEs, do whatever you gotta do, and just try to keep these enemies contained in this little box so that um, they don't go wandering about the whole map. Because after she respawns, they will be around if you don't take them out. Now I see some ammo in here, so that's why I'm going in here. Just going to hang out in here. Once again, you'll see her actually pop back out. Her health bar will come on the screen when she's coming back out. And she just kind of runs out over top of me, but doesn't actually do any damage to me while I'm in there. I don't know if that's a bug or not. Um, they may wind up changing that in the final game, but for right now, that's a safe place to hang out. It's a lot safer than standing outside and chancing to get hit by her. And they put a lot of damage on her early on. She had some damage uh, on her at, before she went in, so if you can put more damage on her, good thing to do. Someone was getting the uh, hint there who was damaging her as she was getting out of the way. But I think it all falls apart right about here, as I think I'm the only one over here doing any damage to the ads. Oh, nope, somebody else is over here. I feel like this ad wave got away from us. Could be the next one. And if you do get caught out here when she's respawning, Dodging will get you out of the way of being hit by her. So you can see I dodged real quick, and that's what kept me from turning into goo like the rest of my team. So now the entire team is down because everybody was hanging out out there. Um, as I said, if you just want to avoid that entirely, all you need to do is get inside the cave, and that will do it for you. Just stand towards the back, and you should be good. If you distract her a little bit, she should walk off for you. And when she does, if you have this happen, you can always use this as the opportunity to get your teammates up. Hopefully the first person that gets up will get the next person up. You don't have to deal with too much. Just make sure you're keeping an eye on where she is because she can uh, come back over here and you don't want to face tank her. So I've gotten two people up, done my job, and I'm getting out of the way because I have zero interest in having her kill me. Dropped my ultimate on her since I didn't get to do it once it recharged during the last phase since she transitioned so quickly and to start putting damage on her. Now I believe she will transition one more time. And the more damage you can get on her before this final phase that she goes into, the better. Because it's in this final phase where it's just infinite spawns of bad guys. They never stop spawning. It's a boss burn phase. So when she comes down next time, she's not going to have a ton of health, which is good. Because everybody was really doing damage to her this time. But this is where kind of the uh, things kind of went sideways because everybody was on different areas fighting different waves. And I'm just trying to kind of stay out of the fray at this point because these spawns are just going to continue over and over again until she comes back out. If she has a ton of health before she comes at back out, it might be worth taking out some of these guys, really focusing them down, seeing if you can't pick up some ammo, if you're going to have to burn her down. 
Once again, as she's about to come back out, don't stand like right in front of any of the holes because that will happen. And generally when you're shooting with the sniper rifle, you want to try to actually hit your target, not shoot the wall. That's just a pro tip. And definitely got her attention, so we're going to move over here. Even the way it dies, is and once she goes down, which she just did, that's it. There are going to be still some enemies still around. Just avoid them. You don't really have to kill them. Uh, anybody who's dead should come back to life, and uh, the mission itself should end. No loot comes from this final boss. I don't understand it, but... You get two chests in this and that's it. I don't know if that's going to change in the final game either. I sure hope it does. It just um, seems a little weird to me that they would wind up, uh, you know, you go through that big battle and hit the final boss and you don't get any loot. So a little strange, but, uh, you know, it's a demo and uh, obviously not all the content's going to be the same. I know we're a couple patches behind with this one. It's... Uh, just a demo, so we can't read too much into it till we see the final game. But that's going to wrap us up for this one. If you guys got questions, comments, um, you're interested in uh, seeing different Anthem content, let me know what you would like to see coming up on the channel. It's definitely a game we're going to be playing, so I'm going to be posting videos for it. Not sure how it's going to shake out between live streams and actual like walkthrough type videos like this, but as I said, I was noticing a lot of uh, confusion and quote-unquote fail through the uh, Tyrant uh, Mine Stronghold mission and just want to put up a quick video for any of you guys who are thinking about jumping into the demo this weekend and checking it out since it is a free demo right now. Uh, you can get that on uh, Origin.com and I think it's on the uh, Xbox Store as well as the PlayStation Store. So if you're interested in the game, you like the gameplay, give it a, give it a, give it a look. Uh, they definitely put some patches in it from the previous uh, VIP demo to stabilize some of the uh, loading screen issues and the bugginess and the rubber banding. Obviously saw that melee issue is still there, but um, they have uh, gone out of the way to try to make the uh, demo this weekend a little bit more of an enjoyable experience for everybody. So hopefully you guys will get a chance to hop in and check it out. If you didn't get a chance to already, please hit that like button on the video. It really does help the video out. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications for more Anthem content as it comes. But as always, Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.